Hey folks, welcome back. Today I want to talk about REST API development. Or more specifically, I would like to show you some approaches I use to test out uh, a REST API while I'm working on it. And I'm not saying any of these is bad, I'm not saying any of these is good, I'm just going to provide you a list of options uh, so you can pick and choose yourself. Uh, first one is a very well-known one and is practically free. You might already have it if you use OpenAPI or Swagger, uh, formerly known as Swagger. Uh, it's a standard for documenting or, or specifying uh, REST APIs. And if you have that, there's only like a little jump you need to take to get to something called Swagger UI. And Swagger UI is an auto-generated uh, UI uh, to interact with your REST API. Uh, for example, they have uh, this example online, uh, the Swagger Pet Store. It's a REST API for a pet store, and this is the Swagger UI that's automatically generated for it. Uh, if you're writing uh, .NET uh, APIs, or if you're using C Sharp uh, or .NET uh, for your REST API design, uh, there's this Nougat package called Sw Swashbuckle, <laughs> ASP.NET Core. And uh, I think in three or four lines of code, you can add this Swagger uh, UI to your uh, projects and you get it for free. So yeah, what does this Swagger UI thing uh, offer us? It offers us a way to interact with our API. For example, uh, we can, uh, for example, for this uh, pet store API, we can uh, call our, our resource or get pet find by status uh, endpoint. And you can provide uh, all parameters uh, example let's query all available pets and if you hit this execute button you get the actual uh, JSON response back so this is one way to interact with a REST API it works nicely uh, it's the the best part about it is that it's practically free five lines of code in your uh, middleware and you're up and running uh, if you use Swagger or OpenAPI but it has some disadvantages right uh, you can't save your uh, requests that easily. Uh, if you hit F5, uh, all your beautiful JSON requests uh, are gone, stuff like that. Uh, and you cannot script. So if you need to create a resource, for example, I need to create a new pet, and then I want to uh, get that pet, I have to copy paste the ID, stuff like that. So scripting is impossible with this auto-generated UI. But it's very basic. Uh, me and my team I use this on a daily basis uh, to just quickly trigger some endpoints or to quickly verify stuff so it's a really great choice that's swagger ui number two uh not unfamiliar for most of you but i wanted to shout it out uh, is this tool and this tool is called postman and it's a, a separate tool so uh, you have to download it and install it uh, but it offers a bit more so it offers scripting it offers persistence of requests so i can just shut down this uh, app and start it up again and all my pre-built uh, requests are still here. And yeah, you can do some basic scripting with, with JavaScript. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's a nice tool. It works really well. You can share collections with uh, your teams. So if you have a whole set of example requests or, or tests even, you can share it uh, with your uh, colleagues pretty easily. What are the drawbacks? It's another tool. So uh, you have to learn something else. And for me uh, specifically, uh, the scripting is, is is okay, it works, but the scripting is JavaScript. You have to learn JavaScript. Not that uh, it's a very different kind of language if you're uh, developing a, a backend API and you're doing whatever, Java, JavaScript, uh, C Sharp. But yeah, it's you have to learn a couple of new things and the sharing, it's possible, but it's a different tool chain that you're uh, used to. So, But it's a very good uh, tool for REST API. Uh, developers. So that's number two, uh, Postman. But now let's get into uh, the more exotic ones, uh, the one that the ones that I actually uh, wanted to make this video for, right? <laughs> I am a .NET developer, so from now on we're going to drop into Visual Studio. And in the latest version of Visual Studio, there's this support for the, a thing called HTTP files. As you can see here, I just created a new file, petstore.http. Let me uh, get a, a sip of coffee first. Sorry about that. So yeah, you can create HTTP files and you can uh, type in uh, some uh, get posts, some HTTP requests, and this green arrow appears. Uh, you can also sub sub provide sorry uh, headers, like 
like uh, I want to accept uh, JSON. This is my bearer token. You also see a basic scripting functionality here. You can declare variables and use them in, in requests. I can declare a status, uh, bearer token, uh, pet ID. So that all works. Uh, and if you hit this green button, you get these requests get fired. And on the right in this pane here, you see uh, the response. So that is uh, pretty similar to Postman because I can save my requests. I can check them in into the uh, source code repository into my Git repo. So I can easily share this with my team. Uh, so it, it offers all advantages of Postman uh, or almost all advantages of Postman uh, and none of the drawbacks. If you are uh, writing backends in your Visual Studio, uh, this is a practically a no-brainer to have uh, some HTTP files in there. Um, but yeah, it's an option. Uh, what don't I like? It's very new. Uh, the capabilities are very basic. For example, if I do a, a post of a new pet like here, uh, there we go. So yeah, the doggy is created. Uh, but I can't grab out the, the idea, for example. So I can't do anything with the response just yet. I'm assuming a, a year from now, we will be able to capture our responses and, and parse the, the ID out of there in these HTTP files. But for now, right now, uh, you have to copy paste these IDs yourself if you want to do some uh, interlinked REST, like do a post and do a GET with the, the ID returned by the post, stuff like that. You have to do this uh, yourself. So. It's a step in the right direction. It's not quite there yet, but uh, it's in your C Sharp, or sorry, it's in your Visual Studio. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, also practically free. That's number three, HTTP files. Uh, number four is the most exotic of the four, uh, but it's also the most powerful, so bear with me. And it's in this program.fs file. FS is an extension for F Sharp. It's a Another language in the .NET ecosystem. Uh, probably most people use C Sharp, but this is a valid option as well. And it's a very powerful language, and it provides uh, powerful features you can use to speed up your API development or your REST API development with this thing called type providers. And type providers are black magic that generate types on the fly for you based on something. And in this example, it generates types on the fly based on the open API file. So just as this uh, Swagger UI thing generates uh, this basic UI you see here based on some kind of JSON file, we can even, let's take a quick look at this JSON file. So yeah, this is a, an open API or a Swagger, but it's almost the same. Uh, it's a JSON file that says these are the resources and these are the parameters we, we expect, whether they're optional, what they their types are, stuff like that. And Swagger UI can generate this beautiful and useful uh, UI based on that JSON file. Well, a type provider or this specific Swagger provider, type provider, does the same, but it does not generate a, a web UI. It generates a HTTP client or a client I can use in code. So let's give that a, a quick try now. F Sharp has a, 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 an interactive window. So this thing you see below here is just, um, I can select some random code, press, Alt enter and it executes those lines of code. And more importantly, it remembers what I did before. So if I select some code here and press Alt enter, now there's a bearer token thing exists in, in the REPL or in the interactive window. And I can, uh, uh, I can use this uh, in, in first steps. So what is this script doing? It's uh, pulling in the uh, Swagger uh, file. Uh, I'm pointing it to the right URL. I'm adding some authentication and I do this magical line on line 16 and this generates the HTTP client from the openapi.json uh, file and it's magic because from then on I can use uh, methods on this thing that are generated and strongly typed based on that uh, JSON file. So I can do create a pet so this is the post uh, on the pet resource and even the arguments so the JSON payload is typed so this is the, the input argument. Yeah, I can just uh, call this API now. There we go. Uh, maybe let's show off IntelliSense so I can do client dot. And you see, I don't know why my IntelliSense window is this teeny tiny, but I can do add pet, create user. I can do all the 
I can call all the endpoints on that uh, REST API. Uh, yeah, and I can go a bit further and create a pad and then uh, get the ID out of that pad and then query uh, all pads so I can do all kinds of things. It's a full programming language, it's fully scripted. Uh, so this is what I use personally and I use it because it's a, it has all the bells and whistles and is also part of my solution. So I can just check it in, share it with my, my teammates uh, and it works. It requires a bit of knowledge of F sharp. So this is the most exotic. And uh, if you don't know F sharp, this is what will take you the longest to learn. But once you learn, uh, this is like REST API feedback loop superpowers. I can uh, write scripts easily. I can play around with, with things. It's all strongly typed. So this is my personal preference. But either of these four options are great if you want to uh, play around with your REST API. So the options again, Swagger UI, Postman, the new .http files in Visual Studio, or uh, use a type provider in F Sharp uh, if you really want to get crazy. I hope you learned something. I hope you picked up a new tool. If you do, please let me know which one you prefer. And I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.